This is Kayla Wilson. Kayla is a senior, about to be a senior, yes. at Lee High School. And Lee High School is located in District 1, and this is Councilman Roberto Turdino, who is District 1, San Antonio. And Kayla, why don't you tell them what you did? Um, well, I created a petition to rename my um, school so that um, the NEISD board knows that people do want to change since the spokeswoman had mentioned that um, they weren't considering changing it because no one had raised you know any concern about it and when um, former Mayor Julian Castro brought it up I um, as soon as I knew that we could I, I, I wanted to so I made it create a petition so I could bring this to the board meeting and, and show them that people do want to change Wow, that's great, uh, and and it just shows that uh, you know the power of, of proper representation and petitioning uh, to get your voice heard. So I think that's really the whole point of this, and uh, you know starting a great conversation. So I can certainly support that. I just think that you know there are better people because I understand that Robert E. Lee and the Confederacy and the Civil War is part of our history, but it's not a history that we necessarily should celebrate. And um, I just think there are people, you know, other people, better people to n name a school after, to honor, l not someone who participated in and led an army against um, the Union of the United States. And, you know, it, you know, if they had won, the enslavement of people would have continued. So I just think that there's other people to, you know, honor and celebrate. And yeah, there's, and I actually, um, I actually proposed a different name because there was a middle school that was actually um, changed called Jefferson Davis Middle School. It's now Stonewall Jackson Davis. They replaced it for a civil rights leader because Jefferson Davis was a Confederate, um, Confederate um, was a Confederate president. So I thought, you know, for a better, easier transition, it would be George W. Lee, who was also a civil rights leader. Um, so I thought, you know, that would be better. Yeah, I wow, um, very thoughtful, and uh, I think that's great. I think it's great that you're you're leading this, and you're as as you mentioned yeah. earlier, you're going into your senior year. So um, you know, uh, kudos to you for for leading this effort. Uh, I'll say that you know certainly on a personal level, I see the I see the issue. The issue is 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 uh, is very complicated because our history is complicated, mm -hmm. and. Um, What's, what's really great, though, is that you're starting a great conversation, and I think we should have this conversation. I think we need to uh, embrace you know, the telling of all our stories and be brutally honest and, and understand, you know, what that history entails. Uh, you know, on a personal level, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a, a subject uh, that uh, its time is, is due to talk about. Yeah. And, um, but as a, also as a, as a council member and representative of District 1, you know, I do want to open this conversation up to, to uh, the community and to the people that uh, have attended that school before as well. I mean, they, I know that they have uh, some strong feelings, and I think it'd be really great to, to, to begin this conversation to, to be inclusive. Like you said, it, it's, it's curious that most people would say, you know, nobody's ever actually petitioned this before. Well, we've never done this because nobody's petitioned, but maybe people have these feelings that have never yeah. actually done it. So, uh, you know, you've, you've done a great service by sort of paying attention to that and saying, hey, I'm going to, so I'll be the first to petition. And now, are there other people that might have a similar voice or uh, have, have uh, an opinion to express? You know, we all have that right, and that's really what's important. Um, you know, I've said it all along, it, San Antonio's greatest treasure is its history. Uh, we have a very complicated history, as you know, and uh, you know, there's a, the, the, probably the most iconic element of our history is the Alamo, and that in itself has a very complicated past. You know, we, the, Texas was a slave state, yeah. and uh, the Battle of the Alamo uh, told from one side is one story of, of heroism, and, and the other side is, is another story that in, entails, and tells the actual story of, of how there was slavery in uh, Texas, and um, and you know Mexico's desire to abolish it, be the second nation in the whole world to abolish it. Um, 
I think it, it, those are the kind of things that you know really deserve to, you know some sunlight deserve to be told, um, and so so I applaud you for 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 taking that first step. Uh, we're all very anxious about that. I appreciate the uh, the mayor's statements yesterday regarding this this subject because I think she's right. We can't forget that, that this is this is our history, um, and I think that she's also suggesting that we be more methodical, take a very thoughtful approach, and um, and be inclusive, transparent, and um, and really uh, you know, embrace who we are and then try to move forward in, in a more positive way so that people feel like they're not uh, you know being uh, excluded from from what we are today and uh, so I, that, that's how I feel about that yeah like um, what do you feel is, is your role in this? well I, and that's a great question because it's 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 about engagement it's about conversation it's about representation you know, we just celebrated July 4th, and I, I, I went to a small neighborhood association celebration that we had uh, called River Road, and it was a small gathering. They celebrated July 4th, and I was there with our state rep, and um, it was really, they were so thankful that they had their city councilman there and their state rep in this small gathering. And I said, this is what independence is about. It's about representation, too. It's about that, the, that everybody gets a say, you know, that, that everybody gets attention. And, um, and so I think that that's what our role is. Our role is to make sure that, that if you have something you want to say, that you, you are heard. And uh, we, we really believe that, that our role has to extend beyond our own personal beliefs and, 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 and uh, embrace what the community is feeling, embrace, uh, try to reach out to, to those that feel like they cannot say something or didn't know that they could say something. We need to, we need to, uh, you know, bring them into the fold. I feel like when I did address this with um, the school board, with the NIC school board, especially like my principal, I had emailed my principal about, about this. Like I asked her if she could take a look at my petition. And I felt like um, when she emailed me back, I, I, she didn't really take my email into consideration. And that I wanted to have this conversation at the board meeting and it, and I felt like the board and her just like kind of just pushed it aside and said we're not gonna like this is not up for discussion and when she emailed me back she kind of like gave me a history lesson instead of like you know saying that that she um, appreciated my concern but so I kind of feel like we can't like have this conversation with the board because they really don't want to address it. But I that's why I'm trying to get as much support as possible. So so they have to have this conversation. No, and you're absolutely right. And I'm here to tell you that you have every right to speak up. <clears throat> and the board represents people the way I represent people, and so they should be. They should embrace the conversation. Um, my hope is that that we can have a conversation, all of us. Um, <clears throat> me, not just as a council person, but also as a citizen mm -hmm. of San Antonio, and uh, you know, I live just down the street from that high school, by the way. And um, yeah, I think it's important that everybody, everybody's voices be heard. Um, you know, we we must continue to champion those. You know, we 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 have uh, we had a motto early on when when I stepped into the, this role as a council member, when we were talking about some issues. Um, it's a very diverse district, District 1, for example, and um, we caught ourselves in a conversation where we said, you know, we're going to tell all the stories, even the ones we may not like. And we thought, wow, that's a great saying, you know, because what my take is on something is not necessarily what somebody else's uh, point of view can be. And so it's important to embrace all stories and it's important yeah. to embrace what everybody's, you know, uh, got to say. Um, I also want to applaud you. I mean, just... Uh, for your tenacity because, you know, um, I can remember being your age and, and being shut down and being told, oh, you know, it's, it's you know, we don't necessarily need to discuss this. Um, you, need to, you need to know that um, you're right to, to want to bring up the conversation. This is important. Um, and anytime anybody wants to bring something up, they have the very right to do so. We, we on city council uh, express that every week by having a citizens to be heard 
Um, we have citizens to be heard on Wednesday evenings and Thursday mornings uh, on both our council sessions for that very specific reason. You have the right to come in and just tell us whatever you want to say, what's, what's going on, um, because that's what we're here for. We're here to listen. We're here to, to, to pay attention. And uh, I think that's what's really important here. This is what you've, what, what, what you've done, and, and I think that um, especially at your age, you know, I want to encourage you that this is, this is how you should be doing things. You should be uh, you know, taking charge, believing in yourself. The most important thing you can do is trust in who you are and what you feel. And uh, if, if you feel like something needs to be talked about, then let's, let's hear it. Let's talk about it. And uh, we as uh, leaders in our community... Um, must have the courage to to have conversations, brutal ones, brutally honest ones, conversations uh, that are pretty tough. But, uh, you know, my hope is that the conversations yield uh, a feeling of, of, of inclusiveness, a feeling of community, and, and you know, uh, a way to advance how, how we're uh, addressing all our community concerns. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, you know, any, I hope that we can, we can, we can help out. The, the reality is, is, is that, uh, you know, people who, who speak up um, and refuse to, 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 to be uh, quieted are usually the ones that get hurt. You know, you just got to be tenacious. And yeah. it, it's, um, unfortunately, uh, this kind of work is hard work. I, I'll tell you, this is this is both the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. It's also the hardest because it really it, it takes me on this emotional scale um, all over the place. And uh, it's I'm dealing with people and their feelings, and 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 I want to help them. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I can tell you, I want to encourage you to stay to be tenacious, to 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 keep pressing. Um, it, it's it's it, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work on our part, um, but you know leaders should should be willing to take take on that work. Yeah. You know, th these are things it, it, that are born out of you, and and when 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 you have a dream to do something, I had a dream to be an architect, and I swear it. You know, there's so many things that that wanted to uh, you know derail that, and um, I was hell bent on on becoming an architect I became an architect and now that I'm a council member I I hope to bring a lot of that passion that I had for being an architect to this role in fact people will say so you're an architect that means you you draw plans well okay that's that's kind of in a nutshell a, you know sort of a task that we do but that's not really what we do what we do is we shape experiences and like you just described you know how, do, how does it you know shape people's perceptions spaces do that <clears throat> And as architects, we, we, we take on the client's want for a certain experience. Uh, if we're designing a home, how does somebody want to live at home? If we're designing a park, what does that park want to engage its users like? So yeah. this, is, this is what we're after, it's the experience. So that's why I can embrace uh, you know, what you're saying because it's your experience. It's it's valid because it's yours. It's not, yeah. You know, it's you know, what you feel is what you feel. It's always valid, um, and so as an architect, we we take on those those notions about what people are wanting, uh, and I think that that spaces, uh, public spaces, for example, especially, are seen in very different ways and. And as an architect, I've I've worked on you know several projects like that that and know that depending on what culture you come from, what background, even what age, they really tend to 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 uh, uh, be different experiences for for many people. You have to sort of try to gauge wh exactly what that is. And uh, I think that you know what we're facing here is. Uh, I know that in, in relationship to this, you know, this all started with this idea of this, this flag in South Carolina, uh, you know, uh, up in this flagpole in a, in a public space that, you know, really, I think a flag has, has been co-opted for, you know, for use in so many ways. Uh, spaces and monuments are a little different because they, to, they, they do provide a, a sort of a, a, an experience in a certain spot and they, they do try to uh, address 
the the heritage and the culture and the time frame that they existed. Uh, certainly, you know, I I I have no issue uh, taking down uh, Confederate flags wherever they may fly because they 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 do tend to, uh, I should say, in public spaces, uh, because they do get co-opted for for some uh, unfortunate point of views that I would put it. Um, <clears throat> But uh, the built environment is very complex. That's why we need to talk about it, because uh, you know uh, uh, the design of the environment is is a complex design, and um, I know that they, they carry different meanings. And so my hope is as I, as we progress on 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 how we treat our our, our parks, our our public spaces. Um, well, it's, it's the need for the citizens to feel comfortable in their public the spaces that they own publicly. Absolutely. And how 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 people like Kayla can control her public her environment her experience, right? No, absolutely. Well, that's that's. Or the how we augment those spaces, yeah. like the space. I mean, we were we were in Travis Park. You know, there's no explanation or no context around who that dude is and. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> exactly. And so. No, that's that's a great point, and um, I think that's a that's a that's a good example of how nuanced this can get. Because, you know, do we do we provide an explanation? Is that enough? You know, or do we completely remove it? How, you know, how do we treat that space? Do we do we create a balance? How do how can we create the experience that is in, that that is one that that can be inclusive and doesn't make anybody feel um, left out or or, or excluded? from that so and, and ultimately I think that's, you know for places like the Alamo you know I mean that's it which is a, a, a whole bigger question but how do you then take that space and have it also embrace or at least honestly represent yeah I think and I think it's it's the same problem but uh, uh, as I mentioned very complex uh, but certainly, that's that's the issue, right? The the Alamo, as we know it, is as an icon of of San Antonio. Um, it's mostly an icon because it's a mythology, yeah. and mythology is not history. And and so, um, you know, I, I've said it over and over again. You know, certainly we'll keep the history because, you know, there's there's the mythology mythologies carry out throughout the world in in different uh, parts of the globe. Uh, but then there's the real history of, of, of what happened. And um, I think it's important that we embrace history. We embrace all histories uh, in different points of view, just like you're bringing up. And, um, and so that, that, that means if we're, you know, we're going to be uh, uh, strong about, about how we look at our history, we should, that, that means that includes the Alamo. That includes all our public spaces. That includes how, you know, this is a, this is uh, what we do as a city. We represent everybody, and we, we, we should tell all the stories, even the ones we may not yeah. like. Yeah, and, it, and it's funny um, you should bring our history up, because actually I was talking to Miss Charlotte about it, um, that n like our next year um, textbooks, history textbooks, are going, um, I heard that are not going to be mentioning uh, the KKK or Jim Crow laws, and they're going to be a when they do address slavery, they're going to address slavery as a side issue, and I, I was just so I was like you know because our history um, textbooks already kind of like you know downplay some parts of history already, mm -hmm. and like now it's it's just gone. no that's uh, uh, well you know. It certainly is is sad that that we cannot um, that we cannot address our, our history um, in 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 a in a more scientific factual way. We're, we tend to um, un unfortunately I've heard that, and, and it seems like you know uh, creating that that kind of filter yeah. is not good for anybody. Um, you, you know the reality is is that we've we've come a long way. Uh, that doesn't mean we've come all the way. We 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 have to we have to keep working at this. Um, the, the 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 most important thing we can do is to be uh, inclusive and honest about our history. Uh, you know, most people don't even know this. By the way, our city has its own archaeologist, 
and um, and I think it's it's amazing that we have our own archaeologist. You know why it's amazing? Because she's a scientist. She's not she's not a politician. She's not somebody who takes sides. She's here to tell facts, and she's taught me a lot, and uh, I can appreciate that. And my hope is that those textbooks. Uh, can can somehow uh, find their way back to to telling facts, to to going back to to being, to listening to experts, scientific experts, historians, archaeologists. Um, uh, you know, a belief system. Everyone's allowed to have that, but does not belong in our schools. Doesn't belong in, in, in at city hall. Uh, you know, these these things we we need, we need to tell factually. Yeah.